with six servants. A long time ago, there lived an old queen who was also a witch, and her daughter was the most beautiful creature under the sun. But the old woman was forever thinking how to lure men to their death. So, every man who wanted to marry her daughter had to perform a task for the old woman. And the task was always so difficult that it could not be done. And then the unlucky lover received no mercy, but was killed immediately. Many a poor young man had tried and failed, for the maiden was very pretty. But a certain king's son made up his mind to brave the danger. He had heard of the beauty of the princess, and he begged his father to let him go win her. Never, replied the king. If you go away, you go to die. When he heard this answer, the son became very sick, and he remained sick for seven years, for no physician could do him any good. At last, when the father saw that nothing else would help the prince, he said to him, Go now and try your fortune, for I know no other way to cure you. As soon as the prince heard these words, he jumped from his bed and felt new strength and vigor return to him and made ready for his journey. Soon he set off, and as he rode along, he saw at a distance something lying on the ground like a bundle of hay. But as he approached nearer, he discovered that it was a man who stretched himself on the earth and was as big as a little hill. The fat man waited till the prince came up, and then stood up and said to him, If you need anyone, take me into your service. Very well, perhaps I shall need you, said the prince. Come with me. So the fat man accompanied him, and soon they met with another man, who was also lying on the ground, with his ear close to the grass. What are you doing there? asked the prince. I am listening, he replied. I am hearing what is going on in the world around, said the listener. Nothing escapes my ears. I can even hear the grass growing. Tell me then, said the prince, what is happening at the court of the old queen who has such a beautiful daughter? I hear the hopeless cry of an unsuccessful wooer. Follow me. I can use you, said the prince to the listener, and so the three now journeyed together. Soon they came to a spot where were lying two feet and part of two legs. Then they came to the body and finally the head. Hello, cried the prince. What a tall fellow you are. Oh, replied the tall man. Not so much of that. Why, if I stretch my limbs out as far as I can, I am a thousand times as long. But if you will take me, I am ready to serve you. The prince said, Come with me. And as they walked on, they came to a man who had bandaged up his eyes. Have you weak eyes? inquired the prince. Can you not look at the light? No, I have sharp eyes, said the man. They are so powerful that I dare not take away the bandage, for whatever I look at splits in two. Yet if I am of use to you, I will go with you. I can use you, said the prince. Come. They traveled on and found a man who was lying on the ground in the scorching heat of the sun. And he trembled and shivered so that not a limb in his body stood still. What makes you shiver when the sun shines like this? asked the prince. Alas, my nature is quite different from all others, said the cold man. The hotter it is, uh, the colder I become, and the frost enters into all my bones. And the colder it is, the hotter I feel, so that I cannot touch the ice for the heat of my body. You are a strange fellow, said the prince. Come with me. Perhaps I may need you. 
So they traveled on and saw a man who was standing and stretching his neck to such a length that he could see over all the mountains. What are you looking at so eagerly, said the prince. I have such clear eyes, replied the man, that I can see over all the forests, fields, valleys, and hills, in fact, quite around the world. Come with me, said the prince. I am still in need of one like you. And now the prince came with his six servants to the city where the old queen dwelt. When he arrived, he would not tell his name, but told the witch that if she would give him her daughter, he would do any task she sent. She told him she would set him three tasks, and if he performed them all, the princess would become his wife. What is the first? asked the prince. You must have fetch me my ring, which I have let fall into the Red Sea, said the queen. Then the prince went home to his servants and said, The first task is not easy. It is to fetch a ring out of the Red Sea. But let us find a way to do it. I will see where it lies, said the man with the clear eyes, and looked down into the water. There it hangs on a pointed stone. If I could but see it, I would fetch it up, said the tall man. Is it there? said the fat man, and lying down, he held his mouth open to the water, and the stream ran into it, as if into a pit, till at length the whole sea was as dry as a meadow. The tall man bent down a little and fetched out the ring, and the prince rejoiced and carried it to the old queen. She was astonished, but confessed it was the ring. Hmm, by luck you have performed the first task, but now comes the second. Do you see those three hundred oxen grazing on the meadows before my palace? All those you must consume, flesh, bones, skins, and horns. Then in my cellar lie three hundred casks of wine, which must all be drunk empty by you. May I invite any guests to the banquet? asked the prince. No dinner is worth having alone. The old woman smiled wickedly and told him that he might have one guest for company, but no more. Then the prince went again to his servants and told them what the task was. And then he invited the fat man to be his guest. He quickly ate down the three hundred oxen, flesh, bones, skin, and horns, and asked if he was to have only a good breakfast. Then he drank all the wine out of every cask, without so much as requesting a glass, and drained them all to the very dreg. When the meal was over, the prince went to the old woman and told her that the second task was accomplished. She was full of wonder and said, No one has ever done so much, but one task remains. And she thought, You shall not escape me, for you shall fail this time. Tonight, I will bring my daughter into your room and you shall place your arms around her. But beware that you do not fall asleep while you sit there, for at twelve o'clock I shall come, and if my daughter is not in your arms, you are lost. The task is easy, the prince thought. I shall certainly keep my eyes open. When night came, the old queen gave the maiden into the arms of the prince. Then the tall man coiled himself in a circle about the pair, and the fat man placed himself by the door so that no living soul could enter the room. So there the two sat, and the maiden spoke not a word. But the moon shone through the window upon her face, and the prince could see her great beauty. 
he did nothing but look at her and was full of happiness and love. This lasted till 11 o'clock, and then the old woman cast a charm over them all so that they fell asleep. And at that moment, the maiden was carried away. Till a quarter to 12, the three slept soundly, but then the charm lost its strength and they all awoke again. Oh, what a terrible misfortune, cried the prince as soon as he awoke. I am lost. The faithful servants also began to lament, but the listener said, be quiet, I will hear where she is. He listened a moment and then said, the princess is sitting 300 miles from here on a rock. You alone can help us, tall man. If you will stand up, you will be there in a couple of strides. Certainly, said the tall man. But he with the sharp eyes must also go with us to pierce the rock. Then he hoisted the sharp-eyed man upon his back, and in a moment they were on the enchanted rock. Then the man with the sharp eyes removed his bandage and looked around, and the rock was shattered into a thousand pieces. Then the tall man took the princess home in an instant, so that they all were seated as before and rejoicing. When the clock struck twelve, the old witch stole into the room, smiling horribly, for she thought her daughter was safe enough on the rock and that the prince was hers. But when she saw her daughter in the arms of the prince, she was frightened and said, Here is one that can do more than I can. She dared not, however, break her promise, and the maiden was therefore engaged to the prince. But the old woman whispered in her daughter's ear, It is a shame that you are not permitted to choose a husband to your own liking. Then the proud heart of the princess became angry, and she thought of revenge. And the next morning, she caused 300 bundles of sticks to be heaped together. Then she said to the prince, The three tasks were soon performed, but still I will not marry you until someone shall be found who will sit upon the fire of these sticks and endure it. She thought none of his servants would be burned for their master, and that out of love for her, he would himself sit upon the pile, and she would be freed from him. But the servant said that the cold man had done nothing yet, though the rest had, and so they placed him on the top of the pile of wood. But when the flames had ceased, there stood the cold man amidst the ashes, saying, I have never before suffered such a frost. If it had lasted much longer, I would have been frozen. After this, no other excuse could be found, and the beautiful princess had to take the unknown stranger as her husband. Then the wedding party passed on undisturbed. And when the two had been blessed in church, the six servants took their leave, saying to their former master, Your wishes are fulfilled, and you no longer need us. We will therefore journey on and seek our fortunes. A few miles from the palace of the prince's father was a village, near which a swineherd was tending his pigs. And as the prince and princess passed him, the prince said to his wife, do you know who I really am? I am no king's son, but a swineherd, and this man here with the pigs is my father. Then he dismounted with her from the carriage, and they went together into the inn, and he ordered the host to carry away secretly the royal clothes belonging to his wife. So when morning came, she had nothing to wear. But the innkeeper's wife gave her an old gown and a pair of old slippers, and of these things made a great favor, saying, If it were not for your husband, I would not give you anything. The princess now began really to believe that her husband was a swineherd, and with him she tended the drove, 
and thought it was a punishment for her pride and haughtiness. This lasted for eight days, and then she could bear it no longer, for her feet were sore all over. Then two persons came to her and asked if she knew who her husband was. Yes, he is a swineherd, she said. Come with us now, and we will take you to him, said the two strangers. And they took her into the palace, where her husband stood in his royal robes. She did not recognize him, however, until he put his arm around her and said, I have suffered so much for you that it was only right that you should also suffer for me. And then they had a big wedding celebration, and everyone was very happy, especially the prince and the princess.